Hello and welcome to episode 4 of Tier Listing, our West Ham players. And the good news is Gonzo's finally discovered his player ratings book that he couldn't find. It. They're the all previous... memorised. Couldn't find it in the previous three episodes, but he's found it for episodes four. And we're now, well, naturally, three quarters away through the squad. But we've got some big players coming up today. We've got John Lucas Kamaka and Tilo Keller as the main two. We've also got another new signing in Everson. Declan Rice is still here, Ben Johnson and Connor Coventry. So we've got the academy players and the new signings to work through today. Gonzo, you ready to get cracking? Absolutely. All right, let's see who's next up for our tier list. It is Tilo Keller. Oh, okay. Look, I'm going to say this here. I think it's easy to. Sometimes it's easy just to concentrate on the most recent games you've seen. And the most recent games we've seen as Tilo Kerr, he's been playing at right back. He's not played particularly well. I thought he was excellent when he first came in. I think he played five or six games uh, at centre back. I think he looks really. Really good. Uh, I think he's been not the only player that's been played out of position and looking a little bit worse uh, under David Moyes. I, I can't put him in the poor category, Gio. I think he's been a good signing. I think he'll it will remain a good signing. Where I, I are think... you going to put him? What well, was the middle one? The okay, decent, whatever the thing is. I think he's been all right. No, all... no, 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 yeah. no. I can make an argument for very poor. Never mind, quite poor. He's cost us the most goals out of anyone in our team. Factually, statistically, he has. Even when he played decent centre-back, he scored a known goal and conceded a penalty. Now, admittedly, I think he was a bit harsh with it. The own goal doesn't really bother me. He was against Tottenham as well. But he's still scored a known goal and conceded a penalty. And that's when he was playing well. Right back, he's been an absolute liability. Constantly out of position. Constantly leaving other players under pressure. At fault for numerous goals. Um, no, I'm not. Apart from that, you like him, though. In possession, he's good. I think, listen, I think he's a good player. Right? I do think there's a good player in him. I think he will get better as he gets used to, pardon me, playing for West Ham and not Germany or PSG. Listen, you can't buy players from countries and clubs like that and you expect them to switch just like that. They're going from one style to a complete contrasting style. You know, by, arguably, that's why it was a... A questionable signing in the first place. It was a bit of a panicky one because of this the up situation. But we've gone and brought a centre back that can't really play the way that we play, and it's a bit daft, if you ask me. And it's nothing surprising. I hadn't seen him at PSG. I'd seen him at Schalke. And what I'm seeing at West Ham is what I saw at Schalke: a rash defender that comes running out. You can be prone to a little bit of. I don't know what the word is, where he just goes a little bit mental and, and, and loses all sorts of composure. And, and he's done that at West Ham. And the amount of times I've seen us concede a goal and watch it back, and he's at fault. Not always is he directly at fault, but at times um, he played his part in it. Like the the goal against the second goal against Leicester City, jogging back. The, the yeah. first goal against Leicester City, Harvey Barnes is the one that starts to move, his man. Go back to Man United, gets beaten at the back post because he's um, by Marcus Rashford. Hasn't a Scooby where Marcus Rashford even is? Never mind um, getting beaten by him against um, Crystal Palace. It's a stupid pass from Craig Dawson. But why is he a better right back would have let that go out for a throw in and went, right, I'm not touching that. I can't control it. He thought he could control that. Turns out he could. And, and Palace ended up going and scoring for him. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh. Now, one of those, I don't mind. But almost every single game, we're conceding a goal, and he's involved in some aspects of it, whether it's poor positioning, whether he's just directly at fault, whether it's his man, whatever. Every goal we're conceding, he is involved at some point in the build-up or at scoring the goal. I'll put him in quite poor. Can we agree to compromise here? We'll put yes, him in the middle. Okay. So okay. we'll put him in quite poor yeah. for this one. But I've not been impressed by him, and I think he'll get better. But for now... I don't know. Jury's massively out as far as I'm concerned. Now, Connor Coventry. Oh, he's been all right. Yeah, I think so. It's it's difficult to judge given the competition yeah. or lack of competition, if you like. That's all he's been asked to do. And he's 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 been all right there. You know, again, I've got my family book now, haven't I? But I think you'll you'll see, you know, six out of ten performances. Is it good enough played? though? For Connor Coventry. Is it well, I don't know. I I've, I have no barometer. Uh, if what you're saying is 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 that I don't know what he's done before. I mean, I no, just, I mean for a future at West Ham. Oh no, no, I don't. No, I don't think it is. No, unfortunately, I uh, 
no, I don't think his future will, will be with West Ham. Uh, but I've seen enough to suggest, you know, he's going to have a, it'd be, a, you know, he's, he's going to make it as a professional footballer. I've, I've little doubt about that yeah. at all. Um, but no, I, I think he, it's just not not quite, not quite dynamic enough uh, for for what for what well, certainly for what we need. I don't. I just can't see any way for him to get into the team. But he's you know when he's played, he's. He's, he's neat and tidy. I think he, you would see a much better player in a possession-based team, by the way. Yeah, I completely agree with that. You know, but it's, it's not it's not dynamic enough or, or athletic enough for what, what we need at West Ham or what we do. Ben Johnson? He's been decent, Gia. He's, he's, he's actually been decent. I, I've Again, I've, I've crunched the numbers. I've looked at the stats. <laughs> I've crunched the numbers. That's what they say, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think he's, he's had a... He's done okay. He's he's done okay. He's, he's been deployed in different positions, sort of learning um, right centre back. Um, That's why I'm willing to concede this. I was going to put him in. He's all right, the middle yeah. one. But that positioning thing is why I'm willing to say, yeah, okay. He almost deserves a couple of brownie points for that because yeah. he's playing centre back in a back four as well, which yeah. It was a bit of a field experiment. Needs must and all that. But he struggled, and again, he was at fault, but. I'm unwilling to put up with that to some extent. He wasn't terrible. Mm. Right centre back in a back three, right back, left back. He's had yeah. lots of different positions. Already. Oh, he's got a new position every season. Yeah, every yeah. game. Yeah, it's it seems. Honestly, he has played at left back, left wing back, centre back in a four, centre back in a three. He's played. He's, he's played centre midfield as a and different sides of a back three as well. Sometimes Absolutely. he's left centre back, sometimes yeah. right centre back, and right back and right wing back. Um, I mean. Yeah, I mean, come on. And even as a That's... sub, by the way, he plays a right winger as as a sub. There's a lot of positions there. Um, it's not good though. That's not good for his. It's not good for him. It's it's not it's not good for him in terms of nailing down a position. It is exceptionally good for him in terms of remaining a squad player at, at West Ham at being what what why you always say that the Phil Neville at Everton did everything for Moyes there, or even you know you look at Steve Steve Potts. For, for West Ham, you know, it's that. Now, don't, he needs to sign a contract for him to have that career at West Ham. So that's, yeah, that's what we're, but that's, that's our problem. You know, that a player that is, doesn't moan, is good around the dressing room, and can be an emergency fill in in a number of positions is a bloody good player to have in your squad. If that player has also come through your academy, his home growth, he's basically ticking so many boxes. Um, does he look like Cafu at right back? No, he doesn't. But actually, when you bear it in mind, what that is, is being asked. And he's played a lot, a few games this season, by the way. That's asking him to hard work. What he was saying to Ben Johnson is, oh, we're going to need you to work really hard. Here. Not just physically, but mentally. By the way, whilst you're doing all that stuff, I'll learn this and do that and do that. I think bearing that in mind, I think he's done well. Yeah, I'm looking forward to when... Um... With Anton Ferdinand on pitch, and I'm looking forward to speaking to him about it. One of the subscribers picked up on it on the interview I did with him. Someone said, oh, it'd be good to ask Anton. Because Anton said about how he's getting played right back by Pardew. Yeah. And he said, I want to be centre back. He said, well, put me out in London. He said, I can't because you can play in different positions. Yeah. And someone said, oh, ask Anton about that. Because that's kind of what Ben Johnson is now. Ben yeah. Johnson now can't go get a position because he's too important because he can cover various different yeah. ones. So I'm looking forward to discussing that with him about Ben Johnson to some extent. All right, let's get back to our tier list then. It's John Lucas Kamaka. Do 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 do. I, again, again, I, I, would, I would like to, I would like to just make the point of how he, I thought he, he's had a, he's had a patch of form in the season. So let's say that right. Mm -hmm. But now we're looking at it. The most recent memory of him is in being crap. So um, I'm going to actually go with, but we do have to take into account a 35 million pound. You're right. You're right where you're hovering. Can you slip him in the, in the middle? Um, it's. I'll let you decide on this one. I, I think all right. Okay. I think all right. I think if I did this a month ago, I'd probably put him in the higher one. But yeah. his form's dipped off. And again, he's getting sympathy from me because of the manager here, which is I don't think we're playing two strands. There's been some games where he looks frustrated. He looks, I say frustrated, kind. He looks pissed off. He looks fuming, actually. But then saying that, I've seen him look pissed off when he's scoring goals and we're winning. He still looks pissed off. But... It's one of those where I think I have a real worry about him, actually. 
with Paqueta, I've got this confidence that eventually he will we will utilize him correctly or he will certainly influence games at worst. I'm getting a little bit of a concern that we're not going to see that with Skimaka and actually it's going to be a bit of a, a disaster. And I hope I'm wrong because, you know, I'm, I'm, stupidly, I did a month a video with you saying he's too good for West Ham. But you know something? I actually still stand by that a bit, Gonzo. I still stand by that because that is about ability. And I still think he has that ability. He didn't become crap overnight. He's wasn't wanted by PSG for no reason. So why is he looking crap then? Because he has done in some games, and I have to look at the dugout for that. Even in the games he's played poor, I think there's been glimpses of his quality, whether it's his bringing the ball down, whether it's his passing, whether it's when he's dropping deep. I think you can see the quality he's got. And the difference between him and Antonio, for example, is large. There's a huge difference between the intelligence and the control of the two of them playing yeah. striker. But I expected more from him. I expect a striker of that quality to influence the game despite tactics, get the ball into his chat. I expect him to, like a way to Villa, I remember that game, he practically threw Tyrone Mings on his arse at one point. Mings came up and bumped him. He almost turned around and shoved him and said, well, get off me, I'm going to have the ball. And I thought, well, where is that against Leicester? Why is he not flinging fast into row Z of the stand? He wasn't doing it. There was no hunger anymore. There was no like, well, he got bundled over. Was it Abati? Yes. Abati, bang, off you go. Bang, literally knocked him over. Yeah. So um, I'm going to, I think, he, he, all right, but he's on the way down the tier list rather than on the way up it. Yeah, I think in terms of the, the mitigation, I guess, you know, to make... I can't actually think of an analogy, so I'm going to make one up, right? But it's sort it of like... A, yeah, well, no, it's a bit like a Formula One driver who, who, who jumps in the Renault and he does a couple of laps and, he, oh, well, that was, you know, crap laps, but the old Renault. And then next... So next he does a test drive in the McLaren. Oh, well, you know, something about the end of the old McLaren there. And then the next time he jumps in there, does a couple of laps in the Red Bull. Oh, I don't know, there's something not quite... At some point... You might take the excuse the first time in the Renault, but after the time you think, hold on, mate, you're just a crap driver. And and I just think you start off, and here's where it comes into it, if you're wondering what I'm talking about. If you can't get Chicharito to score goals, then you might get the little ding. Oh, OK, well, all right, well maybe it's his attitude because he is... He's, I thought these are Formula One cars, right? Chicharito. I, I get where you're going now. I, I thought you were saying Skamaka was the driver in this instance, but now oh, I see where oh, you're no, going. Oh, no, Moyes is the driver. Yeah, no, I, get, I get where you're going. Now you've car. brought Chicharito up, and I know where you're Skimaka's going here. Skamaka's the car. Skamaka's the car. Um, you know, because these are really good players who score goals in other teams. Okay, all right. Okay, well, I'll, let, I'll allow you that one excuse for Chicharito, maybe there. And then, of course, Haller comes in. And uh, well, hold on, okay, well, I was gonna say, well, maybe you could take the tactics a little bit to get something better out of him. And of course, then he goes away uh, to Ajax, scores loads of goals, gets a um, a transfer to Dortmund. Of course, we wish him all, uh, all the best. Um, now the excuse wears a little bit thin because you are just looking at it thinking, well, hold on, mate, this is there's a little bit of consistency here. Do, do you know, do you basically do you know how to drive that Formula One car? Do you know how to coach a team to get a to get the best out of a striker, a goal, a goal scorer, not just a striker, a goal scorer. We know, we know that, we know that he can get um, a Naltovic or Antonio or, or Victor Anachebi or whoever it is running the channels. I, we understand, we understand. Can you get Yelovich Everton to come back and help out in the midfield? We know you can do that stuff. Let's forget all that, right? Can you get a goal scorer scoring? And, and I think that's that's the question mark um, that, that he has really. So that being said. I do think it's. I do think it's. I am disappointed um, with Skamaka, but because here's the difference between him and Paqueta. We've already seen at West Ham what Skamaka can do. We've, we don't. We're not having to look at archive footage or you know or, or the Brazil games or anything like that. We actually have some some really good examples and performing well in a West Ham shirt. And the worry is, it's like you just said, he appears to be getting worse. Right, back to the tier list. Um, yes, I know. We've got two of Bonas. We've got Vlasic and Masuaku. I don't know how you delete people. All right, you're just going to have to put up with it. Uh, right. speak, let's do the first of Bona then. The There's only one of Bona, as they sing. And where are you going to put him? He's been all right. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think done a job for us when called upon. Hasn't been called upon in a Premier League game yet. And, and he you... probably won't be. No. I'm, I'm pleased to see him play. I'm pleased to see him playing again. If this is last season at West Ham, which it probably is, 
good, good on him to put in some performances and get some games under his belt. He got we we do you know what we did. We did right by him by triggering the the, the one year option. Yeah, he's got to play at West Ham. We'll see his final season out. Deserves it. Been a good servant for us. And he's played well in Europe. Yeah, I completely agree. Also, it's been an important role. I know it's this is going to sound so backhanded, but playing in the Conference League has been a big role. It's afforded us to rest Kurt Zuma every single game. And Zuma hasn't had to play Conference League football yet because of Ogbonna, because of Dawson, because of Kerr, because of Aguero coming back as well. We've not had to call upon them. So Ogbonna, whilst come the end of the season, you, you might look back and think, well, you only played the group stages and then was involved when rotating in the Premier League. That's still an important job and still an important role of the squad. And if we win the competition... He deserves his medal just as much as anybody else because he's had, a, you know, he's been part of the squad that's won eight games out of eight, six out of six in the group stage. So, um, yeah, good, 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 good for him as well. Like you said, to come back from that injury is almost remarkable. Yeah. Declan, how many year contender? Yeah, yeah, they started off a bit slow, um, but he's he's purring again now. Form is temporary, class is permanent, and all that. You ruined my joke then. Oh, what were you joking? I, was, I, 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 just, I, I just said he's purring, purring at the moment, um, which which puts him in danger of Kurt Zuma. Anyway, don't worry about it. You, you, it, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, last player's Emerson. What we're we saying? Oh, we're not saying any more about Declan. All right, fair enough. Well, um, honestly, what what more do we need no, to say no, about Declan? Right, he speaks right. for let's, himself, doesn't he? No, let's take off Emerson for a bit. Um, <laughs> No, he ain't you know purring. What? Zuma's not kicking him in anytime no, soon. Absolutely. It's a, he's firmly got his tail between his legs, Emerson. Um, I he's quite poor, really. Um, I would I would I'm, I can't say very poor because I didn't expect him to be great. I you know, I, I think we no, got but there's been some conference league games where he's played and he's been okay. Yes, okay. I, I, I expect him to excel in those. Okay, yeah, I get what you're Do you know saying. what I mean? I expect man of the match perform. Any of our any of these players on our tier list, when we played in that conference league in the group stage, I expected man of match esque mm. performances from them. Sure. A lot of them did. Flint Downs did it. Man of match, yes, man of match, man of match. That's why I expected from Emerson. I expected Emerson to rip the right back to shreds, to put pressure on Kness. We'll say, Moisey, you're going to have to play me or you're going to have to change your formation at the weekend because look, I'm swinging in crosses that Skamaka's banging in every game, blah, blah, blah. There was none of that. Some games he just drifted through them. He, he wasn't bad. No, no. He was just okay. But I needed more than okay from him in this competition. He's one of the players that needed that competition to propel himself into the first team. And well, the fact of the matter is, he's not in the first team. Well, he's got a bigger problem than that, which is, you know, the, the fact of the matter is the best left wing back performance this season has been done by the 16 year old and not by Emerson. And I think, you know, I. Emerson has not produced anything close to what uh, Ollie Scarls did in, in any game, actually. So, and I am aware that when you watch the youngsters coming through, you almost cheer every touch. So you probably watch it slightly differently. I get that. But, I mean, we saw dangerous cross. I mean, crikey, he knows how to deliver a ball into a dangerous area, doesn't he? You know, I mean, that boy, that Scarls, if he, if he goes on and has a career, he is going to assist an awful lot of own goals. He really is. He's going to have defenders in a panic, putting it into the back of their own net. He, he really will. He puts that ball in such dangerous positions. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean Emerson. Uh, Emerson's a bit bland, really. I, I got to be honest with you. I, I don't find him. He excels. He's not rapidly quick. He's not got a brilliant delivery. He's not got a great shot. He's not a brilliant pass. He's not useless at any of this stuff. By the way, it's almost like he's a six out of ten for everything. And I guess you know what, mate. You know. When, when, you know, we haggled. We didn't didn't want to pay the 13 million. Maybe we paid 11, 12, whatever. I think that's what we got. But, uh, you know, fair play to him. He helped bring Paqueta in. I think that was a big part of it because it was really important to bring um, those players that have played at um, Olympic and A over sort of Corne, Paqueta and, and Emerson. And that's Emerson. And that brings us to the end of our tier list. So let's recap. In the Hammer of the Year contender, we've only got three players. Saeed Benrama, Lucas Fabianski and Declan Rice. And in the being decent, there's only three players in there as well, which is Aaron Creswell, Ben Johnson and Kurt Zuma. In the all right category, we've got Downs, Ariola, Aguerd, Suchek, Randall, Coventry, Lanzini, Skamaka and Ogbonna. In the quite poor, we have gone with Vladimir Sufal along with Craig Dawson, Harrison Ashby, Pablo Fernandes, Lucas Paqueta, Mikel Antonio, Tilo Keder, as well as Emerson. 
And then in the very, very poor category, we've got Jad Bowen and Maxwell Cornet. So, Gons, that's the end of our tier list. Um, only six players decent or better. It's not great. No, it's not, but I think... Uh... Our league position probably reflects the fact that we've only got six players playing all right. Probably want 11. And just, but there you go. That's something for David Moyes to suss out uh, while the World Cup's on, that maybe it's not a six-a-side game. Well, thank you very much for joining us in this episode. We're assuming you've seen the other three as well. But if you've enjoyed the series or just this video, please do drop a like. Or even if you hate it, just drop a like. We like your likes. Click the thumbs up and subscribe to the Hammers Chat. Myself and Gonzo, we'll catch you in a bit. Mm-hmm.